Expectation for kinetic energy is one half mv squared. The equation for potential energy that we've been using, right, is you could say mgh, but the one we've been using is mag delta y. Okay, mass times the acceleration due to gravity, which is always that 9.8 meters per second squared, all right, times delta y, which is the height above the ground. Now, we know these equations. And we can plug in, every time we see potential energy, we can plug in our potential energy equation. Every time we see kinetic energy, we can plug in our kinetic energy equation. So let's do that. We've got mag delta y plus one half mv squared minus one half mv squared. Okay, we're going to say that all equals pe2. Now, for starters, why didn't we break apart PE2? Well, the reason we didn't break it apart is because we're looking for PE2. In these other variables, we're not looking for KE2 or KE1 or PE1. We don't know what those are. That's why we had to break them apart. But we don't want to break this apart because that's exactly the variable we're looking for. Okay. So that's for starters. We don't want to break that apart because that's what we're looking for. Now, the second thing is, notice that this is PE1, this is KE1, and this is KE2. What that means is every variable that changes before and after, we have to label with either a 1 or a 2, okay? So because this is PE1, we know that delta Y is going to change. Before, delta Y is at 20 meters. After, we don't know where it's at, but we know it changes because she's falling. So this has to be labeled delta Y1 according to PE1. Now remember, our mass doesn't change because it's the same person before and after. So we don't have to mark M with a one or a two. Now our acceleration due to gravity, that doesn't change either. Remember, acceleration due to gravity is always 9.8 meters per second squared. So we don't have to specify whether it's one or two. So we're just going to leave that how it is. Now we come over to our kinetic energy equation. Mass is always going to be the same in this problem, so we don't have to label that. But the velocity, we clearly see we have two different velocities. So because this is KE1, we mark it with a 1 because that's the first velocity. Now, because this is KE2, we mark that velocity with a 2, okay? And again, the mass is the same, so we don't have to change that. All right, so I'm going to erase these equations on this side so we can have more space to work with. And now we're going to just plug and chuck. We've got our variables. We have our equations set up. We're just going to plug in our numbers and solve. So the mass is 90 kilograms. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. And delta Y1 is 20 meters. All right. We're going to add that one half M, which is 90 kilograms. And V1 is zero meters per second from up here. And we're going to square that. And then we also have one half 90 kilograms times V2, which is four meters per second. We're gonna square that, and that equals potential energy two. All right. Awesome. So we have all of our numbers written out, and we can begin to calculate uh, these individual quantities, all right? So we've got 90 times 9.8 times 20. Okay, so 90 times 9.8 times 20 is going to give us 17,640. All right. Now we've got to figure out our units. Okay. Now there are two ways to go through this process. So I'll show you the quick and easy way first. So we know that we're talking about potential energy, right? 
This is the equation for potential energy right here. The units of potential energy are always in joules. So even though we don't didn't put together the kilograms, meters per second squared, or the meters, we know that we're calculating potential energy, so we could go ahead and just write joules there. But just to show you all the whole process, we've got kilograms times meters per second squared times meters, okay? Meters per second squared times meters is going to give us meters squared over second squared. The reason is because this other M is in the numerator, right? Because it could be over one and it's still M. So this M is in the numerator. This M is in the numerator. Two things in the numerator cannot cancel out. They just square, okay? So M times M is gonna give us M squared.